حركاتهم وهمومهم وعزومهم لله لا للخلق والشيطان نعم الرفيق لطالب السبل التي تفضي إلى الخيرات والإحسان تفضي إلى الخيرات والإحسان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أكس الله عز وجل تبلس يقول forgive us all all the muslims may allah azza wa jalla forgive us all those that are alive and those that are deceased may allah guide those that are not upon the path of al islam to the path of al islam the most beautiful religion and may allah azza wa jalla bless us all in this month of ramadan accept it for us aid us in this month to put forth good deeds now there are many things that need to be highlighted but i think those that I've asked many times recently in the past regarding um, sisters and how can sisters that are married to those that are seeking knowledge benefit and also be from those that seek knowledge. So we're going to try and tackle this specific topic in two different methods and also maybe those that want to seek knowledge that are sisters, how can they go about doing so knowing that maybe the resources may be less and the opportunities to seek knowledge may be less. So may Allah Azza wa Jal make it sincere and accept it from us and make it of benefit to all those that listen. Um, so really and truly, it's very, very simple. Simpler than one may think it is. <laughs> with regards to sisters that seek to seek knowledge, or sorry, have the intention to seek knowledge, then first and foremost, the best of advice is that one should be sincere. One should be sincere for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. You should have sincerity. That intention, كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, إنما بالنيات. So with sincerity comes about great benefits. Great benefits. That's the first thing. And you should be truthful with your Lord, Jalla Jalalu, as to why you want to actually seek that knowledge uh, and, and to benefit and to, uh, and to seek knowledge. And be truthful to yourself as well. Know the reasons why you're doing it. Once you have those two things in line, then the next thing I would advise each and every single sister is to have good companions. Companions that also want to tread that path. كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من سلك طريقا As Prophet صلى الله said, whoever treads the path to seek knowledge. يلتمس فيه علما They want to seek knowledge. They want to attain knowledge. They want to gain knowledge. Knowledge of Islam of course. سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة وفي بعض الروايات سهل الله له طريقا إلى الجنة Then Allah makes the path to paradise which should be all of our intentions easier for them So when you have people that are on board and have positive energy and they're not going to distract you or stop you or crush your dreams of getting closer to your Lord and seeking knowledge then you should know that you should be from those that implements the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said what? المرء على دين خليلي فلينظر أحدكم من يخالل that the person is upon the religion of their companion so one should look towards their companion and whom they take as a companion so أختي في الله sister in Islam if you want to seek knowledge and I'm talking for those that are not married so of course you've got more uh, capability of being from those that knows who your friends are because maybe you don't have someone that is in that path of seeking knowledge so if you're a sister in islam and you live with your parents and you want to seek knowledge then these are the first three things seeking having sincerity being truthful to allah Azza wa Jal, and having good companions when you have someone that also wants to wants to seek knowledge let's say you want to seek knowledge and you've got a, a sister who is always out coming back home late doing what they want, when they want, what pleases them and you know into this materialistic life, feminism and other things they're going to distract you because they're going to always be in constant battle with you and what you intend to do with your life and where you want to go so that's the issue that you have to put that to a stop
the next thing is that of course before you even take the means take the means and we're going to get into the means and the method that you can do make dua many of us we say we believe we're muslims and what have you but wallahi many of us we don't know subconsciously we've actually lessened our faith in allah by not having certainty that Allah would answer our du'as and when the blessed month of Ramadan and Nabi Sallallahu what did he say? Ad-du'a silahul mu'min that the supplication is the weapon for the believers if you know that you have the strongest weapon in this dunya which is something that you have to just utter by calling onto your Lord and talking have, have contact, constant contact with your Lord Jalla Jalalu you know and that's something that we forget that the weapon is the, the 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 supplication is a weapon for the believers. So if you want something, as Allah says, "Iya kana abudu wa iya kana stain," in the Quran, and we read that you know, to Allah, we worship. We worship Allah. We worship Allah. We pray towards Allah. We worship Allah. Wa iya kana stain, and we ask Allah for aid and assistance. And the Prophet ﷺ did he say anything to Hadith? What either said to fast Allah, what either stain to fast in Billah. And if you ask, if you are in need to ask, if you want to ask, then ask Allah Azza wa Jal. Alladhi khalaqaka wa awjadaka, the one that created you and put you into existence. And if you, wa idha sa'alta fas'alillah. If you need to ask, then ask Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't ask anyone, don't ask Allah. Return back to Allah. Wa anibu ila Allahi. Well, yeah, I need to return back to Allah. Go back to Allah Azza wa Jal. Return to Allah, make dua to Allah. Raise your hands and ask Allah. It doesn't matter what time it is, just ask Allah to give you that which you please. And just as a point of benefit for those maybe that don't know, but the best type of way to make dua in that which, inshallah, hopefully your dua will get accepted is the way the Prophet ﷺ taught, uh, taught us when he found the companion making a dua that way. And he said, this is the most best of ways and a dua like this will get accepted. That you praise Allah and you thank Allah and you show gratitude by, you know, mentioning his names and attributes and what have you. So from, from the examples is Allahumma inni as'aluka bi asma'ika al-husna wa sifatika al-ula bi annaka Allahu al-ahad as-samad al-ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufwan ahad So you make dua to Allah and this is from the it's not a must to do it like this but you you praising Allah and you're mentioning his lofty names and attributes that oh Allah ask you from your names and attributes to give you know and that you that you have no partner you beg at no son you have no partner you have no children you are not created oh Allah the Almighty I ask you and then you send salutations on his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by the normal ways Allahumma salli ala Muhammad for example okay so you praised Allah you showed gratitude so you're basically starting off your supplication by thanking Allah and praising him the way he deserves to be praised and then you send salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then ask for your affair that which you want and inshallah that's from the most best of ways and manners and that's from the etiquettes of asking of making supplication that you don't straight away jump into what you wish of course there's no harm in doing so but i'm saying that which is better so when one does this it is better for them that they do it in this method and when you ask allah Azza wa Jal, have certainty that your dua will get accepted brothers and sisters so when you make dua ya akhtif al-islam sister in islam have certainty that your dua will get accepted how are you doubting the one that created you and created everything in the heavens and the earth and the universe and that which you have no knowledge of is going to ask answer your dua and he's capable of answering it and is allah who be kafin abda isn't allah sufficient for his servants isn't allah sufficient for you so why are you doubting him make dua to allah azza wa jal Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah is capable of doing all things. So ask Allah. And from the means or from the means that you can take to seek knowledge, the first and first and first and first and first, first thing you should do is get a means of learning the Arabic language. That's going to be your key, miftah lil It's going to be your key to knowledge. So when you learn the Arabic language, you cut off all of those translations and what have you and relying upon a translator relying upon a, a speaker or you know call it to islam and what you don't you just there's no intermediate between you and that scholar or you and that hadith or you and that ayah you don't need any of course if you get doubtful if you're doubtful then you can return back to the kutub of the salaf you know to the ahadith 
تفسير الطبري تفسير ابن كثير تفسير الناس السعدي من الناس السعدي you can return back to the sources you don't need to go online and go and ask google no because now you've got that barrier or that bridge you've made that gap between that bridge where you've now crossed it and you can actually delve into the field of knowledge so that's the number one problem that a lot of sisters face is that they don't have the arabic language so therefore they get confused who can i listen to who can't i listen to what can i do and what, what do i do here what do i do there okay but this is not authentic how do i know it's authentic they search google they get to here they then they, they, maybe they tread upon something that's no benefit to them trials and tribulations al islam try your best to know you want to seek knowledge for the sake of allah that's why i mentioned in the beginning sincerity leave off anything that's going to come in your ways and it's going to come in your path because you're on that dual carriage here right now and you're driving you can't afford to stop think of it that way you're on that dual carriage if you make a stop and you pick up a hitchhiker which means you, meaning that you pick up a fitna or you read about a fitna or a trial or a tribulation, you get involved in something, you're not going to make it for the next journey. You're not going to make it to that journey. And that journey was supposed to be you reaching the end of the drill carriageway and entering that beautiful, beautiful island of knowledge. But you're getting distracted by picking up these things, which you don't need in your life. So hence why, and you don't need in your journey to seeking knowledge. Because remember, it's a long journey. It's a long, long journey. But a rahaf al jannah. You know, comfortability and relaxation is in paradise, inshallah. So you need to be able to be from those that don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Hence why I mentioned sincerity, truthfulness and companions. Because you have to have people that are also on that path. They see you about to stop over. They be like, what are you doing, sister? Come on, let's go, man. Stop that. You don't need that. Let's go. Let's carry on. We're going to be late. That's what you need. Someone that's going to aid you in this path. Now, friends go a long way. They do go, all people that you have around you, they do go a long way because they're going to be the ones that either aid you to carrying on or to distract you. And also, when you're starting the Arabic language course, don't get distracted by meeting so many people, like 50 or 30 people that you're, con you're in constant, you're in constant uh, contact and communication with. You don't need so many people on your path because the more you have, the more problems are going to occur. The more people you know and the more people that you are acquainted with, then you can get caught up in certain things that will not benefit you whatsoever. So you need to just stop and think to myself, do I really need all of these people in this group to be in contact with? Or do I just need two of them that I make revision with? So have a friend that you revise with. Learn the Arabic language, however long it takes you, however much sweat and lack of sleep and sleepless nights. And it doesn't matter if you're in college or you're in uni or you're working at the moment and you're single, and you need to be able to learn the Arabic language, whatever it takes. In work, listening to something, change your phone to the Arabic language if it helps. Try to listen to radios, try to do certain things. Now, the best method when you have a teacher is that you learn the Arabic language, whichever method they're going through, whatever way. And that's something I think that's very, very important. So you learn the Arabic language. When you're learning the Arabic language, and inshallah for the sisters listening, bi-idhnillah, Umm Yunus will be starting Arabic for sisters only very, very soon inshallah. So that's something to look out for as well. Now, for those that are learning the Arabic language, you've got a teacher, whatever method they're using, what book they're going through, that's all good. Things that are going to aid you is to make sure you listen to at least from two to five minutes maximum audio online from a scholar that speaks clear and slow fluent arabic so you listen to them and this is something that i'm going to give you which inshallah you benefit from and it's something that i used to do myself and i found it very beneficial later on it was very difficult and strenuous in the beginning and repetitive which became a bit boring but later on it did help and benefit me you get a notepad you listen to that arabic lecture for let's say just you know what let's cut it down to just three minutes maximum listen to it you're going to be like, what am I listening to if I'm just starting my Alif Ba'ta? Listen to it. And inshallah, once you, learn, once you learn to write, even if you don't know what to write and you haven't reached that stage where you're able to write fluently and quickly, just get that pen, get that paper and just listen. Whatever word you catch, just write it down in whichever method you think is correct, in that which your brain registers. Once you do that, 
show it to someone that you know is fluent in Arabic and knows Arabic and tell them, this is what I heard. Is it correct? If they have time, maybe show them the audio. If not, just say to them, this is what I think. I, this is what I heard. Is it correct? You need to be doing this from, once again, I'm just giving you baby steps in order for you to be able to benefit so that hopefully you're able to make the best out of your journey, inshallah. You need to be doing this on, let's say, I would say daily, but now that's, that goes down to your timetable, but I'm pretty sure you could do it. So let's say daily, daily from five to 10 minutes every day. You listen to it for three minutes. So first you play the audio and then you just listen without writing. Then you play it again, you get the pen and paper and you write. Don't pause it. That's the whole point. Don't pause that audio because once you pause that audio, then it's going to be a method where it's not going to be reality in terms of it's not going to be practical because in that lesson, the sheikh is not going to be stopping for you to write it down, but rather he's going to be talking. So whatever you can take, you can take. Whatever you can't, you can't. So don't pause that audio. Write down whatever you can manage to write down. Once you finish, play it again for the third time. So that's now three times three. Okay, that's nine minutes now. So you've got three, you've got six, and you've got nine minutes. The last nine, the last three minutes is just looking over again and trying to correct if you did manage to see that you, you know, you missed something else. Then you stop and then you just look over it and then you try. And by the way, don't get the one that has the English subtitles. Do the one without the English subtitles just for you to be able to register Arabic and you process it and then you try to think like someone that is fluent in the Arabic language. Because if you listen to translations, or sorry, if you listen to the Arabic, but it's got subtitles, you're always going to be constantly relying on the English and you're going to be translating words from Arabic to English, English to Arabic, which will make you weak as a student as well. That's something guaranteed. And you can tell now, and the reason why I'm saying is because there are students that have studied, for people that have studied, and their Arabic language is to a certain level, but you can tell they process things still in the English language. So certain things that will be said in a conversation, they won't be able to pick up that fast and it'll be, they'll struggle because they used to always rely and depend upon subtitles and translation. Even when they were learning the Arabic language with the book, they had the language in their home language and they had the Arabic in you know one page and then the other page in Arabic, which is something that you shouldn't do. So now you've got that bit. Another thing that you should do is you should try your utmost best to have this as a companion. The Quran is going to help you. The Quran will open up doors for you and it will help you with regards to a lot of new vocab, a lot of new words, a lot of so many benefits. So many fruits and benefits come from reading this book of Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah make us all from Ahlul Quran, from the people of Quran, and make it testify for us, not against us on the day of judgment. You need to be doing that. From the other things that are important is that you need to try your utmost best to be from those that you, you really need to get into a method of using whatever keywords you have, whatever vocab you have. So once you've learned from a teacher, you've done the method of listening. Now, the method I've just said, it helps on your listening and processing skills in the Arabic language, on your writing skills and on your being able to take down note skills because then you'll be able to listen to a lecture and just take down notes and it will make you much more it will make you surpass all those that haven't done this method really when they sit in the lecture because some people they sit in the lecture and they can't write what the sheikh is saying or they struggle because they weren't from those that used to write in lectures or well, they never used to practice it. They just learned the Arabic language and just did it for exams and what have you. But you want to be different. You want to be superior. You want to be, you want to be superior. You want to be, you want to surpass. You want to be better than all those other students. So that's something that will help you as well. The next method is if you want to be able to speak the Arabic language, you need to be from those that have a little small notepad, that pocket size, small one, and try your best to learn. We start with five words a day for five days and then the weekends you revise those words and then you move on whenever you're ready when you seem that you can take in five words every day and you can use it and put it into practice when i say five words like for example 
al baqala the shop okay um al jawal the phone um i don't know al qarura a bottle uh al misbah light and al ibham for example okay uh, which is thumb. So these five words, for example, I've learnt them today. I've written them down. When you've written them down in a notepad, you write it down and then you write the English translation next to it. So you're going to look over them. I don't know how long it's going to take you to memorize, but memorize them. Now I'm going to go out somewhere and I'm going to say to the person, excuse me, do you have a jawal? Now I've written it down. I've looked at it, memorized it and I've used it. So those methods in, in terms of the way you process things as a human being, it's going through your brain cells and it's registering and you've taken it out and you've uttered it, inshallah it will stick. That's the best way to kind of make you more as a person that's going to be confident in speaking. A lot of the non-Arab Arab speaking uh, brothers and sisters or those that learn the Arabic language, they are very weak when it comes to speaking. Their speaking skills are weak because they don't, learn new words and then when or let's say they do learn new words they don't use them that's why i said you should use it wherever you live it doesn't matter what even if you're living here in the, in the uk we live in london it doesn't matter where you live just use it with someone that you know would understand you or even just use it with your friend and be like huh what are you talking about <laughs> but then you say to them i'm just learning arabic don't be shy you don't need to be shy you're learning arabic for the sake of allah inshallah to get close to allah so you can learn and once again when you have that good intention in the you're going to get rewarded for it so when you use that word it's now going to be from those new uh, vocab bank words that you have. You've got a vocabulary bank and you're using it and it's going to be benefit. It's going to benefit no one but you. So once you do that, you're going to be more confident in speaking. And that's something that, inshallah, you would see yourself. And you can see with certain students, some of them you can tell they just learned the Arabic language, even though they've been studying for years. But it's because they don't really speak the Arabic language. They speak more English than anything. So that's something also that's going to help you. And of course, there are other methods, but one of them as well is that when you finish that class with the teacher that you have, you revise your stuff with the student and don't keep your student, don't, don't have, you know, that circle of revision, more than three people, including yourself. Less than, the, more, the less, the more beneficial, the more, the more you're going to get distracted with certain things. The other thing I can mention is now learning and seeking knowledge like what should you do what are the steps from the first steps like i said are these two that assess the arabic language and the quran okay i mentioned arabic first and i remember subhanallah many times the ulama will get asked what should i do first arabic or quran and this is that it's a question that is repetitive the ulama they say you should you should join both really and truly learn the quran okay but learn the arabic language because the arabic language is going to give you the key to actually being able to open up like without the arabic language you can't open up that treasure and there's so many things within that treasure box it's just it's, it's countless but you're not going to be able to do so because you don't have the key so that's why you need the arabic language once you have that then you can choose which path you want to go in but i think one of the key things is the quran okay and learning the quran and then of course you can go into stuff like you should be learning anyway in the language that's com like, that you're fluent in the basics of Tawheed. You know, you need to learn stuff about your Lord, Tawheed, Islamic monotheism, Arububiya, Uluhuya, Ismail Sifat, the attributes of Allah and what have you. You need to learn these stuff. You know, Asul Al-Thalatha, Qawaid Al-Arba'in, you know, you need to learn certain basic things. But I would say learn in the English language when you're able to from the basics of basics of books that I would say you should learn is al usul al-thalatha or even before that is conditions of la ilaha illallah conditions of la ilaha illallah listen to it in Arabic language something very simple and from the mashaykh that I know speaks slow and is very very you know understandable is Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr hafizahullah so maybe listen to clips on YouTube or, or, or his website and benefit and just listen. But like, like I said, once again, try and make Arabic something that, you know, you're, you're looking at stuff in Arabic. You're listening to the Arabic radio if you're, if you're able to get access to it or the Arab news. All of these stuff help. I remember myself, I used to do it. It does really, does, it really does help. Have conversations with people 
Like, honestly, don't be shy. People that are, you know, that you know, that can speak Arabic, just have conversation, just break conversation with them. Even though your Arabic is dead and all you know is Kaif Halak and Alhamdulillah and Akhi and Ukhti, just use it. Just use it. It doesn't matter. Because inshallah, you're going to think back to that day. It's like, wow, subhanAllah, I actually was just like, didn't know nothing. And now, Alhamdulillah, I'm able to speak. Alhamdulillah, it's me, Sumayya, wa ana, yani Ukht, yani qad aslamt qabla ashra sanawat. And you know, it's going to get there. Inshallah, but you have to be from those that get out of that comfort zone, get out of the comfort zone that you're in, get out of that shell, break out of it and just use it. So from the books, there are so many books and everyone is, you know, kind of, they can give you their own methods. But I think the first two should be these things, the Arabic and the Quran, Arabic and Quran. And don't stop. Don't stop. It doesn't matter which one's getting more. Intense, carry on. Arabic, Quran, Arabic, Quran. Until, inshallah, you master the Arabic language and you complete the Quran. From the books and how a sister can benefit, it's very easy. And I think one of the things that they should focus on, on first is getting closer to their Lord. So them having a better relationship. And the best way is to seek more knowledge and to have a more understanding, a better understanding of Allah the Almighty. As the saying goes, How can one fear someone or something they don't know what they what they don't know what they're fearing or who that person is or what that person what that thing is? So the less you know of Allah, the less you're going to fear him. So if you're able to Learn a book which is the three fundamental principles of Al-Islam. Al-Usul al-Thalath are very simple, very short. If you can memorize it, memorize it. But the main thing is not just about memory. Memory is very important if you have the capability. Everyone's levels of memory is different. The main thing is understanding and, and implementation. That's the main thing. Because it's something that we're all going to get asked and when we enter our grave. May Allah aid us. So memorize it, understand it and implement it. If you can't memorize it, read it, understand it and implement it. Take notes in Arabic when you're listening, same thing. After you finish Usul Al-Thalatha, Qawaid Al-Arba'ah. After that, Kitab Al-Tawheed. After that, you can go into the uh, Arba'in Al-Nawi, learning the 40 Hadith of Nawi, and then Nawaqad Al-Islam. This is like a beginning level for a beginning student. Now, and then obviously then the books, you know, one thing as well that I would advise that many people don't actually do nowadays, which is very sad, is learn the book of manners. It's something that's very important as well. Allah. So, yani, I remember the Salaf, yani, so many times we say that kunna, yani, as the meaning is that we used to seek, not, uh, seek manners, uh, learn mannerism 20, 20, 30 years. And then after that, we started learning Hadith. So they used to focus on, on, on mannerisms, then you need to have etiquettes as a student of knowledge. As someone that is, is a good Muslim, you need to, it's important. And then of course the books, fiqh and what have you, and the issues pertaining to women issues and all these stuff, this is something that you should do as well. And tafsir of the Quran and fiqh and aqeedah and you know, seer of the Prophet's biography, these are all things that you should do. But I think the main thing is how to just start and how to kind of keep it up. Now, as a sister, you know, who's single, you should be able to dedicate Arabic at least three hours a week, you know, bare minimum, you know, especially from your, from your, if, you're, if you're from the age of, I don't know, 16 onwards up, you should easily be able to dedicate three hours in a week every day along with one hour revision. So that's four hours and it could be split into so many different sections and segments and, you know, segments and it's just... You've got no excuse because you've so much time on your hand. Try and start today, this month of Ramadan. Make this month of Ramadan be a month where you can start, you know, and dedicate that. And Quran should be, you know, all the time, really. But practically wise, it should be at least try and dedicate 30 minutes. Okay. So you've got seven days in a week. And if you do 30 minutes, three hours a week. Plus, you know, so that's six days and then one hour of revision. Try and just do that. And when I say Quran, even if you're not fluent, I mean just sitting down and reading it. Okay, reading Fatiha, Qul Wallah Ahad, Qul A'udhu Min Falaq, Qul Min Naz, and all the other little small surahs if you're, if you're beginning. Listen to it, memorize it, learn. And Alhamdulillah, there's so many resources, like, you know, from those that I know that Um Yunus does 
tafsir and Quran lessons weekly for sisters. And there's so many other beneficial places that you can learn from, but there's, there, you, have, you have no excuse. And all of this is from the comfort of your house. I'm talking about, I'm not, talking, I'm not telling you to go pick up your, you know, yourself and ask permission from your father to go and live in you know, uh, Mauritania or Egypt or something. No, I'm telling you from the comfort of your house within your timetable, fit it in within your schedule. You can easily do it. It's practical and it's possible. So don't give me any sort of excuse because you can do it. It's just about how willing and determined are you? That's the real question, I think. After you've done that, you know, you've got now a schedule where you can still carry on with your hobbies and what you like to do when you like to relax, how you like to cool down and everything. Everything else you like meeting up and people and no problem. But you're at least you're dedicating time because seeking knowledge, it doesn't necessitate that you completely give up your normal, normal livelihood. And I'm telling you from, you know, experience in terms of seeing scholars that have children that have you know there some of them they do khutbas some of them they teach in the universities some of them they teach in mission number they're still seeking knowledge so you've got no excuse as someone that is single and your young sister living in the west or anywhere else in the world you can still seek knowledge don't wait until you get accept don't wait until oh i'm going to get married to a student of knowledge no 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 let's be let's be real let's be practical if you don't start now who's telling you that you're going to you're guaranteed to, to even reach that stage of marrying that person who's going to seek knowledge or who's who's guaranteeing you that you're going to actually seek knowledge then if you haven't started by yourself that means you're doing it for the sake of when you're married to that person you're not doing it for the sake of allah always check your intentions Wallah, we need to, we need to always just stop sometimes in our lanes and just like, you know what you know let me make dua ask allah to forgive me and renew my intention that's what you need to do because really and truly you should start now. Why are you waiting until someone comes and helps you? If you're, if you, if you're doing it for the sake of Allah, you start right now. As soon as you listen to this right now, put this on pause or stop and just do it right now. There is no excuse. So that's that. And like I said, like one should have companions that helps them and aids them. And um, yeah, I think that's the best way. Now, I did say two, two sections and I think I need to add a third one. Sisters that are married, but they're not married to students of knowledge. Or maybe their husbands are not aiding them. And they're not interested in that kind of journey. But they how, now want to start that journey. The best advice I would give you is to make dua to Allah. You know, to, for Allah to aid you in your situation. And to give you patience. Because everyone's situation is different. Some sisters, maybe they could be mothers who are single. And it's very difficult. So, and some sisters could be married, and they're just married to people that are not interested. You know, brothers that are not interested. So, what do I do? The best advice I would give you is to be sincere, to be truthful, and to ask Allah to return back to Allah. You don't need to ask no one for help. You just ask Allah the Almighty. Allah is sufficient for you. al Islam. So, if let's say now you are married and you're a single mother. Sorry, you let's say you're a single mother and you've got children. That's what I meant to say. Um, you need to do the rights of your children and look after your children. That's the most yeah, any mandatory thing within anything at the moment. Seeking knowledge, you can still, and I'm telling you this because I know and I've heard stories of people that are in your situation probably even harder and they have no support whatsoever and they've still managed to seek knowledge. There was a beautiful story, subhanAllah, I came across where an imam, he said, that uh, uh, an auntie in Medina was in her late ages, like I think maybe like 50s or 60s, and he was growing up and she used to struggle to get to the masjid due to her old age and her illness and what have you. I think late 50s or last say late 60s, and she would struggle until she walked every day and went to the extent where the teacher would be like, you don't need to come, I'll come to you, you don't need to come, you know. I'll call you and just read to me. And she said, no, I want to come to the masjid. Until subhanAllah, she carried on going to the masjid until she finished her whole Quran. She was in her late 60s. I'm talking about someone that's, you know, memory is not, but she was dedicated and determined. And she was inshallah, nahsibuha kathalik. We hope, you know, we think good of her. And we don't praise anyone in the eyes of Allah that she was sincere. So that's what you need to have. These are the things that will, that's why I said it goes a long way, sincerity. It does, and it will help you. It will aid you. So if you're a single mother, what do you do? Number one, you make sure you have a timetable. A timetable does help. Now, personally, I don't, I'm not really good with writing down my timetables. And I'll be honest. I'm being honest so that I can help you out. But at the same time, I can have a, 
schedule in my head. So I would usually always say to myself, if I'm going to do something, of course, I'm not a mother, but I'm just helping you. Like if I was, for example, in your case, I would say to myself, okay, I need to do the run in the morning. You know, normal kids run where get breakfast, get them ready, get them prepared for school. If you're taking them to school, I don't know a situation, or even if you're home in school, homeschooling them, whichever the case, do that run in the morning. But before I do that, I'm going to make sure I wake up 20 minutes earlier. Before I start that run that I need to do that, they're all going to be awake in my face. What do I do? I wake up. Okay. And the best time, subhanAllah, for anything is in the morning. The, the, this nation was blessed. So, you know, we start in the morning early. If you can do before Fajr, if you can't, some people then just dead in the morning after before Fajr, do it as soon as you pray Fajr in your Hujr, meaning in your place where you pray, okay, in that room that you pray in. Do your adhkar, pray salah, and just dedicate maybe five minutes to learning the alphabet. And there's so many resources online, it's so easy. And inshallah, hopefully, if Allah makes it easy, we'll dedicate some time to doing the whole alphabet book where we, you know, for people to try and benefit. Um, learn the Arabic language by the methods I gave. Whichever portion you're going to do, so do that where you just do five to ten minutes of the Arabic language. Uh, maybe maybe memorizing a new word and then and then listening to something in Arabic, writing it down, or the Arabic how to join your letters, whatever it may be, and then do Quran for another 10-15 minutes, listening to it, reading it, and reading tafsir. You've you've now yani made you've now done your portion as a mother with children and single. That's a big thing. You've now started your day off with barakah. And that's why subhanAllah some of the salaf they would say that when they read Quran in the morning, they would see that their day would be filled with lots of success and blessings. So start to do the same thing. You know, the Prophet what did he need to make dua for? Rabbi zidni ilma, you know. And that's something, yani Allah the Almighty asked, the only thing that he, was, he, and he asked to increase of in the Quran when you see is for knowledge. Because knowledge is beneficial, it benefits you, it's a light. It, part, it literally lightens that way, it paves that, paves that way for you on that journey. And then what's the dua that he used to ask for? Allahumma inni yasaluka ilman nafi'a. Oh Allah ask you for beneficial knowledge. Wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalan saliha. And, and, and successful what? Uh, and good provision. And to accept my deeds, righteous deeds. So the first thing was knowledge. So anyway, point being is that you've done that in the beginning. Do the run for the kids, take them to school, whatever, come back. Maybe you need to prepare lunch, I'm not sure, or dinner. Have a rest if you need to have a rest. Do what you need to do. And then afterwards, listen to a talk. Even it could be on the way there, coming back. Sorry, it could be on the way coming back. And one thing as well that I would advise the mothers is, you know, when you have children, and even this is for the fathers as well and all those listening. But when you have children in the car, they say that it's it's called unschooling. And it's something that's very, very important where if your child is systematically going to school and doing certain things, you need to somehow be able, not every single child learns in a systematic way where they're actually in the school environment and building. Not every child concentrates like that or learns will digest or processes things like that. So you need to know as well that sometimes teaching your child just on the way to school, you ask them, okay, uh, what do you do in this scenario? And you see what their reaction will be. And then you give them like a scenario. Okay, but you know, subhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu or the companions or this or that. And then once, let's say you're walking on the way to school, you teach them something. You'd be like, who can tell me why is this mom so special? And then you see what they say, and then you tell them. Maybe you listened to a lecture yesterday in the nighttime before you went to sleep, you learned something, teach your child that. Teach your child that. So then you're teaching them something, but you're not actually sitting them down because sometimes it could be very boring. And if you see, subhanAllah, the way the non-Muslims have made cartoons and these things so engaging and so capturing that the child is like literally engrossed and completely in that movie or cartoon, you would realize and know that it's something that you have to try your best to make the deen be beneficial and fun and engaging. And that's from the advice I can give in terms of, you know, you're going to be in that place where you're now able to teach your child in a method that's a bit more fun and a bit more subtle. That's what you should do. Also, from the things that will also aid you and help you 
is that when you come back and you cool down and you have dinner with the kids, talk about something to do with the dean, and then talk about how they went and how they got up to school and whatever, and fit it around your timetable where you have a time where maybe you let you do Quran and you do it together with them. So you've got Quran teacher, you do it together with them as well. And that's something also that will help you and it will, aid, and it will also aid you. Another thing as well that you should do, it should be that you should um, be from those that tries their utmost best to have some sort of time where you dedicate to, it could be so many things, but from the means is that it help you or from those that tries to benefit yourself by the means of having a time where you just have companions, maybe other mothers that are single that also that also want to seek knowledge and they also want to tread that path. If you do that, inshallah, it will help you and it will be from the things that will be able to aid you because you're going to have companions on that path and on that journey. And inshallah, hopefully, you know, these points and tips that I've mentioned would have been uh, of benefit to you all. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make it all beneficial for us to make it sincere for his sake, Jalla Jalalu. And I mean, there's so many things that we can say and touch on, but it's just about having a routine. Like I said, you don't have to actually write it down. It could just be something that you plan and you stick to and you know that, okay, you're going to try your utmost best and you make dua to Allah and you're sincere and you keep it continuous. Allah, inshallah, will give you beneficial knowledge. But Arabic is the key. Arabic is the key. Arabic is the key because Arabic it opens up that door to you now not relying on anyone to give you that translation of that hadith or of that text. It's not a must to go to Jami'ad, Saudi Arabia in terms of that's the only way to seek knowledge. When I say it's a must, meaning people think that's the only way. It's not, not many people have access to going to the university, going to the Jami'ad and stuff like that. So you can still seek knowledge as well. And there's so many things that you can do. But once again, it's just about being sincere and wanting to seek knowledge. Just the same way you wanted to um, get married, just the same way you wanted to get that degree, that MA, that PhD, that job, that career, that business. Just be dedicated, be sincere, have determination. Always never give up. Don't say no, never say never, never say it's impossible. It is for you, but you just have to be dedicated. Do that which will aid you, that's going to be beneficial to you. And inshallah, I think on that note, we'll end. Um, due to my daughter, Allah, uh, um, you know, having a time when she now is awake and she, I need to give her my attention. And subhanak Allahumma bhamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa tubu ilayk wa sallallahu sallam ala amin Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ni'mal rafiq li talib al-subul al-lati tufdi ila al-khayrat wal-ihsan tufdi ila al-khayrat wal-ihsan